Okay, and uh, so last week we talked about how to solve those problems graphically. And uh, this week we're going to introduce uh, how to implement uh, an LP model into Excel. Okay, and uh, because this course is for engineering management students, uh, we and I'm, I kind of mentioned that in the first week, we're going to use Excel um, and uh, the, the, the software is called the solver, which is adding to Excel. Um, and the purpose of this course uh, is not only um, help you to formulate LP models, implement them in solver, uh, but also learn how to implement a model in Excel in the best way. So that uh, when you show your, say, your clients or your employers or your boss, uh, whoever, supervisor, who's going to look at the Excel model, um, it is presented in the best way, okay, best communicable way. And uh, there are some, um, so the, the company that uh, makes the solver, um, it is a company. And uh, if you have, uh, say, questions, technical support, they, they offer technical support. You can go to their website to um, get some um, questions answered there. Um, there are so some other packages for solving those uh, mathematical problem, um, pro programming problems, uh, um, like those ones I listed here. Um, and I'm sure there are other uh, programs people use too. But we'll focus on solver in this case. Um, some goals for spreadsheet uh, design. Okay, I don't know how many um, of you, how much you use Excel or have you used Excel before. Um, Excel is really a powerful tool that uh, um, have a lot of formulas, functions that you may not know. Um, and we'll learn a lot of those formulas in this class. Um, some goals for the spreadsheet design. Um, first, uh, communication. Okay, we we'll use those Excel spreadsheets uh, um, to communicate the information to the managers and uh, stakeholders and the customers. So when we design a spreadsheet, we need to keep those in mind. Second, reliability. Okay, the output uh, of a spreadsheet should generate uh, correct and uh, consistent uh, output. Okay, and uh, auditability. A manager should be able to retrace the steps followed to generate the different outputs from the model in order to understand and verify the results. Um, this means uh, make it really easy for people to understand. Um, and we need to keep in mind that uh, uh, many times uh, um, the audience who are going to review our Excel spreadsheet models uh, do not have the background. And to make it really clear, okay, say from A, relate to B, say, okay, we have the unit cost and we have the number to produce and here we have the total cost. Um, so it's in a readable um, format that people will make it easier for people to trace back all the steps. Okay, and if uh, um, it's, uh, it's related to this uh, uh, last uh, goal too, modifiability, okay. Um, say suppose uh, the, how to say, the, 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 say the unit profit change um, next time we want to use this Excel spreadsheet. Um, instead of going into the, the functions to change a specific number, we should be able to, okay, locate that cell that uh, have that uh, um, unit profit. Very quickly, just change that number and the entire spreadsheet don't need to be changed, does not need to be changed. Okay, so when we design the spreadsheet, we need to keep those goals in mind. And uh, so some, um, Specific guidelines, we'll go through this quickly here and uh, we have this entire, uh, entire semester to practice this. Uh, organize the data, then build the model around the data. Do not embed numerical constants in formulas. Uh, that means, uh, for example, um, if uh, we are going to calculate total profit again, okay. Um, do not put uh, those values to represent the number um, and the unit profit in the formula itself. Instead, put those values in individual cells and in that formula, refer to those cells. Um, this uh, helps achieve those goals that we talked about earlier, okay. And the things which are logically related should be physically related. Okay, I keep using this example <laughs> of total profits. So the, the, the unit profits and the numbers to make and the total profit, these are related, right? So put them together. Um, so people don't have to say, oh, the, the, the number is somewhere here and the, the unit uh, uh, profit is here and the total profit is somewhere here. So you need to put them, say, like in the same line so people read, okay, unit profit, number to make, and total profit, they are all related together. So physically together, help people to locate them very easily, okay. 
and the use formulas that can be copied. And we'll talk about this a lot. Say, OK, there are different uh, tricks that you can use in Excel that makes it very easy. You don't have to type those formulas every time. You just uh, type it once and copy it all the way. OK. And the column rows total should be close to the column rows being totaled. You don't want people to find, try to find, OK, the sum. So here is the sum. OK, which, which cells are, am I sum summing up? You have to go all the way. like look at the entire spreadsheet to find those cells. So it's, this is one is related to the one that's uh, logically related need to be physically related. Some more guidelines. The English reading eye scans from left to right. So when you try to um, relate those things, uh, read from left to right. And uh, use colors, shadings, boldings, and the protections to distinguish all the changeable um, parameters from other elements. So anytime, any, any place that uh, um, say, for example, the decision variables, the objective function, and the constraint, we usually shade them in different colors. And the text box and the cell notes to document those different elements, especially when the Excel becomes really big and uh, complex. Um, document them, put some like uh, comments and uh, um, cell notes will be very helpful. Um, not only for other people to, to try to understand your spreadsheet, but also for yourself to remember. Okay, so some steps in implementing an LP model in a spreadsheet. Um, organize the data. So usually in the, for example, in this, pro in this class, we'll have the problem statement. So there will be tables and the data given. We organize those data first, okay? And uh, reserve the separate sheet in the spreadsheet for the decision variables. Because the decision variables are the ones that the uh, solver will help us to determine what the values are. So usually we reserve some blank cells for those decision variables. Okay, and when the problem, when the model is solved, value will appear in those cells. Uh, create a formula in the cell in the spreadsheet that corresponds to the objective function. And uh, of course this, uh, this cell will include a formula that represents uh, um, the relationship um, among the, those decision variables and other values in the spreadsheet. And for the constraint, create a formula in the same way to the left-hand side and the right side. Okay, now we're going to implement this uh, model that we created last week, the Blue Ridge Hot Top problem um, to an Excel. Okay, so if you can open your Excel. <coughs> I do have the specific steps uh, listed in my um, uh, slide, so if you want to review it later, you can do that. Okay, but now you can just uh, follow me. Here, I'm going to just for my information. I'm going to copy this model here. So these are my, this is my model. You, you, you don't need to copy to your Excel spreadsheet. This is just for me to, like, to show you guys. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is, remember the first step, we're going to reserve some spaces for our decision variables. So here will be the x1 and x2. So we need uh, two cells that uh, represent uh, these uh, decision variables. Okay, and if we remember from the uh, problem statement, uh, these represent the number of equal spots and the hydroluxes to make. Okay, here, I'll just open one. So this will be the A core. And this will be the hydro axis number to make. Okay. 
and uh, sorry, go back to here. So go back to my first uh, sheet. And those uh, 350 and uh, 300 here represent the unit uh, profit. Okay, and uh, these represent those unit numbers here represent the unit of the resources that needed. Um, so I'm going to put. Uh, I'm going to move just a little. Okay, here will be unit profit. So unit profit will type in the 350 and the 300 here. Okay, and here will be the resources needed. The first is uh, pump, labor, and tubing. Okay, so pump, labor, and tubing. Pump is one, one, nine, six, let me see. So these are all the given data. And I'll put uh, available. This is a given data too. So we have 200 number of uh, 200 unit of pumps. One five six six. One five six six. And uh, two eight eight. Eighty. Okay. So these are all the given data, and we organize the data first. So we have the unit profit. Uh, um, this is the equals bus. This is hydrolysis, and uh, these are the pump labor tubing unit of pumps labors and the tubing required and these are the available ones okay let me enlarge this part okay then we're going to reserve we're going to shade these two cells that were reserved for the decision variables in yellow. Okay. And uh, here I'll, I'll put the. So yellow means uh, decision variables. Okay, then the next thing to do, reserve a place for the objective function. Okay, and uh, what's the objective function? What's the objective in this case? It's the total profit, right? Maximize the total profit. And we said the things that logically related need to be physical related. So here, we have the unit profit here, so I'm going to put uh, total profit. Say total profit. Here, I'm going to shade it in blue. Okay, and uh, we don't leave this open. Uh, we don't leave this blank because uh, there should be a function here. Okay, so equals to be this one, right? Three fifty times the number to make for equals bus, which is our x1, plus the 300 times our x2. 
So this is what we said. We do not put the numerical values in the formulas. Instead, we put numerical values here in a separate cell and refers to them, refer to them in this uh, formula here. So later, for example, if this unit profit of equal sparse change, we just come here to this cell to change it. Okay. Okay, so that's our update function. And then we we'll look at our constraints. So these are the constraints that represent, uh, for example, pumps used need to be less than equal to pump available. Labors used need to be less than equal to labor available. Tubing used need to be less than equal to tubing available. Okay, so we've already got this available part, which is the right hand side of the constraints. Now, what we need would be calculate the right, uh, the left hand side. Okay, so left hand side is a function of those uh, values and our decision variables. Okay, so now what I'm going to do will be to move this row, oh sorry, this column here. And uh, so I have some space to calculate uh, used, okay, which is the left hand side of our constraints. I'm going to shade these ones in red to represent the left hand side of constraint. I'll, I'll finish this legend here. So left means uh, left hand side of constraint. Forgot to put a legend here. So this will be the objective function. Okay, then for each of those left hand side of the constraints, same as the objective function, we need to put in functions, formulas there that represent one times x1 plus one times x2. Okay. And before I do that, so let's look at all those three constraints, they have exactly the same format, right? It's all of them have, uh, say, the numerical value, that's the unit of resource needed for equal sparse and the hydrolysis. And it's uh, this times the decision variable plus the second uh, times the decision variable, less than equal to uh, right hand side. So we said that uh, it's desirable to use uh, functions that can be copied. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a function here that can be copied all the way down here. Okay, and uh, also we can still, uh, you don't need to follow here now, okay. Uh, we can still type, say, okay, this equals to be this one times uh, this one plus uh, this times uh, this one. But if we type in this way, it's uh, difficult for us to copy. Um, you can still copy that. Let me just show you. You don't have to follow now. So if I copy it this way, all the way to here, okay, let's check. When I click into the cell, those cells that uh, shift are shifted, okay? So these two are what we needed, right? These are the, the coefficients of our left-hand side. But we would like this one to be fixed here and this one to be fixed here. This would be the right function for this cell, okay? So how do we put a function in this first place that when we copy it, and uh, these, two these two cells will be fixed there. Any of you know that? The dollar sign. The dollar sign, okay. And also, beside that, uh, this function, we have to type this times this plus this times this. If there was, say, okay, um, four or five values on each row that need to be multiplied and add them together, putting functions in this will be, will be difficult, okay. So there is a function that's the sum product function that uh, takes the sum of the products of two arrays. Okay, 
So what we can do is some product that some product of this row and this row. So this will be the function to use. And in, not in order for this entire row to be fixed, when we copy this formula down, we can put a dollar sign before the row number of that row that we want it to be fixed. Okay, and you can do this by clicking F. So you can click, uh, you can do this by clicking F4 too. Okay, so that's the row three we want to fix. So we put dollar sign before this uh, three here. We do want this row to shift when we copy this formula, so we don't do anything to that. Okay. Uh, would be some product of uh, this entire row and the comma, this is the second row. Okay, then when you are done, you can copy it all the way to the last cell. Whenever you copy a function, um, I suggest you click in the last cell that to which the formula is copied. Click inside it and check to see if it copied correctly. Okay, sometimes we, prob we may put the dollar sign at the wrong place or we forgot something and it copied incorrectly. And it's always easier to identify the arrows uh, right after you input all the formulas. After you solve the model, you find something wrong and go back to problem sh shooting, it will be really difficult. Okay. Okay, so now I click and say, okay, it's correct. These are what I want. Okay. With that said, actually, we can use this function here at this uh, total profit part, and then we can also copy that to here. Okay. Okay, so now with uh, all those, uh, so we have cells for our decision variables reserved. We put the function in our objective function. We put function in all the constraints. Now the model setup is done. <coughs> we'll go to solver. So go to your addings, premium solver, to define. Objective, so click on this objective, click add. Then point to your objective function cell. Uh, in the, what's that? Uh, Okay, let, uh, let, let's finish this, okay. Yeah, let's finish the setup of this and I'll come around to, to check that. Okay, so that's the objective. And if it's a maximization, keep it at the maximization part. If it's a minimization, do the minimize, okay. Click OK. That helps set up the objective part. Then click the variables, click add. How do you get to that bar? Are those uh, adding, solver. You found solver? Yeah. It means if you have already solver, then you will find it on the data. You have the bar data. Yeah, yeah. it's on the right. Yeah. Found it? Yeah. Yeah. So yours is not under the addings? Okay. So for some version? Wh which, which Microsoft Excel you're using? Mine is 2010. Oh, mine is 13. That's what I'm using. Okay. Okay. So yours is under data analysis? Yeah. Do you have to um, pull it every time?
OK, so variables do the same thing. You select those variables. Select those yellow shaded cells in your variables part. Click OK. So you find it under data analysis? Yeah. Okay. Sarah, did you find yours? Yeah. You didn't find your solver? For that? For that class, we use the solver. Oh, advanced operations management? OK. For our problems? Kind of look like the same name. OK. I think yours is the older version. Maybe. Did you install the solver? It was already installed. So oh, that's not the solver that we're using. Maybe. I think what you have is the what's the Microsoft solver. It's not the solver that you use from the adults. Maybe you want it's it the same. That is, uh, yeah, it's the same. Same thing. Same thing. It's the same version. So this one's 15 point. Yeah, that is like mm. the latest version. But anyway. Okay. Okay. I will see if it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, I think it should be fine. You installed it from a different class, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you find it? Yeah. So it, it's under data analysis too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe we should have a different version. Okay. Yeah, so for those of you who are online, if you don't find it under add-ins, it's in the data analysis. So maybe we should find another computer to demonstrate that. Okay. Um, then, then for the constraints, click constraints and add. <laughs> so here are the constraints. So you need to put in the left-hand side. For example, first constraint will be, this is the left-hand side, the used, need to be less than equal to the right-hand side. Okay, and then click Add to add another constraint less than equal to this constraint here. And add the third constraint. Make the left hand side less than equal to the right hand side. Then click OK. Then you will see all these three constraints being listed under the constraint here. Okay. And another way to do this, another much faster way, is because all those three constraints are listed in the same place. Okay, and they have the same format. So what we can do is, uh, I'm going to delete the, these ones now. What I'm going to do now will be to add all three constraints at the same time. So the left hand side will be all these three cells. Less than equal to, oops, sorry. All these three cells on the right. Solver knows that that means uh, for each of them individually, it's the left hand side less than equal to the right hand side. Okay, so from this you can see the benefits of putting um, constraints in the same group. For example, this one is also all of them are like the resource used less than equal to resource available. 
So put them together, um, save you some time to define the constraints one by one. Okay. And click OK. Um, in this problem, we have another constraint, which is the non negativity constraint, which is the x1 plus sorry, x1 and x2 greater than or equal to zero. So you can either add them in the constraint parts or here, make unconstrained variables non-negative. Okay. Then the next thing would be to add, to choose the right algorithm. Since we are using we're solving linear programming problems. So using the stan standard LP will be the algorithm. Okay. <coughs> Make sure you use this uh, standard LP for all the um, linear problems. Okay. Because uh, um, the other problems may not be able to solve your. Simplex LP is the which one? Yeah, simplex LP. Simplex yeah. LP. Yes. Right. Okay. Continue. And then click solve. Yeah, click solve. Then you will see this message here. Yeah. Solver find the and please make sure you read this uh, message here because sometimes it will tell you solver didn't find the solution or say the the, con the the constraint are not met. Don't just assume that the once there the, the numbers here appear, then they are the solution. Okay, read this uh, message please. Here, so our final solution, all constraints and the optimality conditions are satisfied. That means we find the optimal solution now. Okay, then keep OK. And you see, okay, it's all for you. And the solution is to make 122 equal spots and the 78 hydroluxes. That gives a total profit of uh, 66,100. Okay, so here, then with this, you can do some cosmetic um, work to this model to make it look nicer. Okay, for example, we said they use the borders uh, to put things together, and uh, for example, maybe I'll, um, I'll add a row here. I'll insert a row here so that, oh, and unshade it. And uh, um, save time, I put ASHL. So maybe put like equal spots, hydroluxes, uh, and put the hot top at the top. And um, need to move this total profit somewhere. So change just some cosmetic work to make the spreadsheet look nicer. Okay. So I'll put on my screen here. Will you end? Uh, I'll see if you have any questions. I'll come to an answer. So that's my final model. <coughs>